Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to look at the future with Clojure. So I guess the future is now. Uncle Gear. So I have this basic project set up. I use this time string function that I got from the Clojure website. Links to everything is in the description. This time string function just returns the current time. So what does the future function do? Well, the future function essentially just takes a set of expressions or forms and evaluates them in another thread. So if you're familiar with Java and multi-threading, it's the same thing as like creating a new thread and then running it, but it's much easier syntax. So basically if we run future with a function, let's say print on the code again and evaluate this, we can see that we print on the code again and then this invocation returns us a future object which we can use to test if the future is still being evaluated so actually let's look at that so i'm going to define a function here called main i'm going to add a let binding and i want to bind the return value of this future to f let's actually just make this last a bit longer so to make it last a bit longer i'm going to use thread sleep and i'm going to sleep for five seconds and then what we can do is we could say when not future done and we'll pass through the future, which will be F, then we can actually do something else in our current thread. So let's print line still busy. Cool. Evaluate that and let's run that function. So we can see that still busy is being printed a few moments later. Still busy was printed because the thread is still busy and then eventually on the code again was returned after five seconds. So if we change this when to a while, then the still busy will be printed repeatedly. So let's say print line still busy and then let's let this one, let this, this thread sleep for like one second. Evaluate this and now we'll see still busy being uh, printed every second and then eventually on the code again gets printed and we're done this program has finished executing there are also like other functions that we can call we can actually call future cancel and this takes in the future and it tries to cancel it it tries to if it can't cancel it it just can't cancel it if you're familiar with working with threads you know that they're they can be a bit bajiggity so let's invoke main still busy and then it cancels so in this case it did manage to cancel the thread then we have some more functions here we have thread cancelled which will return us true or false if the thread is cancelled so if we evaluate this again still busy null and then this actually didn't do anything so let's print it out print line thread cancelled and let's evaluate it again still busy cool the thread was cancelled because it prints out true and that's basically the future function. It takes in forms, evaluates them in a new thread and returns a future object that we can also run other functions on. So now let's say you wanna run a function repeatedly while the rest of your application is working. Well, we can also do that. So I'm just gonna comment out this main function and create a new one. So let's do that here. I'm gonna create a new main function. And what this function is gonna do is I want it to every second basically print uh, the time string, which we know returns us our time. So let's create that function actually. Define, let's say, call it print time wait. And it's gonna print our time string. And then it's gonna thread.sleep for one second. Then what we can do is we can call this function over and over again in our main function. And we can do that using repeatedly. So repeatedly takes in a function which takes in no arguments. That's our print time wait. And it will create a, a lazy sequence of this print time wait uh, in, at infinitum. We're gonna use a future to invoke this function over and over again, while allowing us to continue on our current thread. So we'll use future here and we also need to wrap this in a do run otherwise it won't execute and then we can do other things in the thread as well so we can like i don't know let's continue printing lines we can print on the code again and then we can we can actually make another future here so another future and then this print line 
can print from the future. Let's say we also just want to return one plus one. So before we execute this, I see that print time wait uses the print function. I wanted to use the print line function. Reevaluate this. And now let's execute main. And here we can see that main actually returns two. So we know that closure returns the last evaluated form. We print on the code again, then we print from the future. And now we're printing the time every second. Because this is not in our main thread, our main thread has finished. This is on another thread. It's still busy executing. That's when we could use something like get the return value from this future, put it in an atom and then stop it there. Actually, let's do that. So I'm just gonna stop this REPL now. Start the REPL again. And evaluate the file. Cool, so we wanna assign the value of this future to an atom. So we have control of it elsewhere in the app. So we can just define an atom here. I'm gonna call it F and it's gonna be an atom and it's initially gonna have the value null. Then here we can reset our atom f with the value of this future. And if we invoke this now, run our main function, so it'll print the time, but now we have access to f. So what we can do is run future cancel on f and oh, we have to dereference f. Cool, and it stops the thread. And that's it for futures. Um, if you really wanna do proper like multi-threading and passing data around, I suggest using core.async, but futures are really like quick way if you know you have a process that's gonna take some time, pass it over to future, let it run, and then continue, let your program continue in its current thread. I hope this helps somebody. Um, cheers, catch you in the next one, bye.